I just pulled up to the original assistant of Epic Gardening, Chris, but she's now our head of customer experience and I'm checking out her garden because I kind of want to show you guys everyone on the team's garden and I'm seeing some incredible stuff here. Chris has one of the coolest, most beautiful gardens I've ever seen in a suburban home. So why don't we go up and meet her right now? Hello, hello. Hey, how are you? What's up, Chris? Hi. Come on out. It's my Good first time you. at your garden. Oh, welcome. Good to see you. Good to see you too. All right, guys, Chris, actually, you Hi. initially were the first assistant at Epic Gardening back in pandemic times, which is when you found out really gardening in general. It's how you came to Absolutely. it. Absolutely. So what we want to do is just show you the front yard and then Chris can take us through the whole thing. All right, I'd love to. Let's do it. All right, great. So Chris, we're here in really just is like right up in the front. Yep, front yeah. yard. So what have you done to kind of transform this? What did this look like before? Um, we had such an ugly house before. It was <laughs> blue with red shutters. This was just dead grass. Okay. And we initially just um, got a chip drop and just covered it just to kill the grass because it's that crab grass, that mm -hmm. really yucky crab grass. We had the, the chip drop down for about six months. And then after we did the backyard, which I'll show you guys in a little bit, we decided to put food in the front too, because okay. we have five people here. Sure. And so growing food for five people takes, you know. A little a, more space. A little more space. And, and so what did you do up here? I'm noticing this, this is kind of cool. It's like a little wicker It's a grapevine. Edging. So this is a grapevine um, edging. Yeah. Kind of just holds the chip drop stuff there. We get really good at drainage actually. So this mm. is, um, this yard's great for these raised beds because yeah. it just drains all the way down. I don't even water these. This is just from the drainage. Yeah, and this so. is all just stuff you planted in from, mm -hmm. from um, starts or? Uh, the nasterium were from seeds. Yep. Daisies were starts. Mm -hmm. um, Foxgloves, Cosmos. I didn't even plant the Cosmos. Those just that popped thing up looks from amazing. Last year, yeah, that looks really good. <laughs> which was crazy. Uh, the zinnias. I plant it from seed. I got all those from the San Diego Seed Company. Sure. Stuff, and um, so mostly just the daisies are starts. Um, the salvia is from seed. The lavender was a start. Okay. Yeah, and then the roses we bought as um, small ones. Okay. And then they're they're growing. But we really needed to get a lot more pollinators. We didn't have any pollinators out here. Yeah. So the first season that I gardened, I didn't have a really successful gardening um, like adventure. Like too, too many pests, it too was, many. Yeah. yeah, and just, and like my squash weren't pollinating, my tomatoes weren't, I was having yeah. to hand pollinate everything. So having all the flowers has really helped draw in those pollinators. And this is not on irrigation at all, you're just sort of I have drip in the beds. Okay, cool. Okay, mm -hmm. let's, talk, let's talk about the beds, because this is where all the food is, right? Did the tall ones for, our eggplant, tomatoes, cucumbers. I have these uh, cool little supports, which I love for the eggplants because they get so he um, heavy. Yep. And then, so this bed is full of just kind of that kind of vegetable Summer type stuff, of stuff. Right? Yeah. yeah. And then in the winter, I'll do this with um, spinach, shard, cabbage, that type of stuff. That's what we had in here all winter. And okay. then the eggplant is actually the second season. I cut it back and overwintered it oh, just and overwintered. it's yeah. popped up like this, which is just crazy to me. That's something you can do in San Diego, guys. If you're yeah. in a warm climate, you can actually overwinter. This okay. is a combination of um, flowers and then I'm doing several different peppers in here. Mm -hmm. And again, I had a really hard time with the peppers pollinating, so I'm thinking that these flowers are really gonna help that process. Sure, I see, a, I mean, there's a monarch right flying right by, that's perfect. <laughs> All right, the other half of the front yard, Chris, we've got a little arch here, which I love. This is made out of what? Cattle panel. So we had a yeah. cattle panel in the back, we cut it in half, and this is the rest of it. Uh, we only needed it, you know, like this, like two square feet of, I mean, of it, or two feet. Yeah. So it worked out great, it was uh, easy. That's all you need. Nice to repurpose that. Yeah. Sunflowers are growing here. Those are from seed. Okay. Those are huge. They're huge. Yeah, these are massive. We've got another birdie's bed that looks like it's got some salvia. You got some strawberries mm -hmm. in here. Borage. Seems like you, we, we actually toured Natalie's garden pretty recently mm -hmm. and both of you seem to interplant a lot of flowers and edibles in the same bed. Yeah, I yeah. really like that. I like, again, the pollinators coming in and I just like the aesthetic of it. I love yeah. the mix and match. This is a really great um, purple pepper mm -hmm. that I cut back to just uh, basically a twig and it's popped up this much since yeah. last year. Which and you're is... using this just to support it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just kind of what weave it through. And I think I have yeah. a couple other peppers deep in there yeah, that are going to pop up through there. That's the birdie six in one there, right there? Yeah, the this is one. the birdie six in one. Yeah. And then this is the eight in one, but I configured this a little smaller for little the smaller. space. Uh, you got massive artichoke. Yeah, this massive artichoke, huge. lots of strawberries. Okay, you've got a pretty prolific artichoke here, Chris. Why don't you <laughs> talk about this for us? So I got this artichoke when you and I went to Mission Hills Nursery a couple yeah. years, like a year and a half ago. Yeah. 
and I've cut this back three times. It's so huge. We yeah. get uh, my family's sick of artichokes, to be honest with you. <laughs> I'm gonna let some of them flower, and then I'm excited to try the tubers. I heard that the tubers are delicious roasted. Okay. So I'm gonna do that next. So we'll still pick some. We're giving some to the neighbors, but I'm really excited to. Um, let them flower because the flowers are so beautiful on those. Honestly, it's almost as pretty as they are tasty to eat. Yeah, I totally opinion. agree. Yeah. They're a gorgeous flower, such a beautiful color purple. And that's the front yard. That's the front and yard. This really is like just a tiny piece of the whole garden. So right now we're going to flip over to the backyard and show you the suburban backyard garden that you're using to grow how much of your own food? We grow about 80% of our produce. Oh, 80% for five people. So incredible. Yeah. Let's go take a look. All right, Chris, where are we at now? We're in the back, so this is where I do my seed starting. Okay. Uh, so I just have a few right now. I've got these Celebrity Tomatoes, Ooh. which um, are looking phenomenal. I'm gonna transplant those this week, good. I think. Yeah, these are in the Epic Four cells. Yeah, I love yeah, these, yeah. Um, so sturdy. Oh, these peppers, which I'm really excited to try. I've never What's even the... heard of these. They're a Jaluk. Oh, you're in for a treat, because these are ghost peppers. Oh, these are extremely hot. That'll be good. So like, I could never even come close to eating these personally. I would roast my face They'd off. They'd be good in salsa. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Make I can't even know if I eat the salsa. An epic salsa. Epic salsa. Bell pepper. And then uh, my favorite thing um, is these little sweet peas. I love mm. the, the... Oh, Tom Thumb. Yeah. That's a great variety. It is. I so love these. So you do these. all your seed starting on this little bench here? Oh, um, I'll do it out in the garden and yeah. then I'll just bring it in here to keep it protected. And yeah. then when I harden it off, I'll just put it out there for a little bit. And then I've got, um, I just started these yesterday I've got some shishitos mm. which there's nothing to see there but yeah it'll take cool. a couple days on those guys and some lettuce sure so a little yeah. seed starting zone and then if we turn around you actually start to see the prepared backyard garden which looks absolutely incredible so why don't we head out there okay cool so here's the backyard this is awesome yeah oh I just got cool. hit by a spider web <laughs> all good so you got a little sign here Chris that mm -hmm. says Christina's garden Fresh produce, herbs, fruits, veggies, established 2020. Yeah. So are you a, you're a pandemic I am a grower. pandemic gardener. This was nothing. This was just grass. Like, you know, we had had trampolines back here when the kids were small and yeah. swings and yeah. it was just trashed. And I mean, looking at it, Chris, it doesn't look like it used to be that way. It looks like you've been gardening for years, you know? I appreciate it. So it looks, it looks amazing. It's, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm actually really happy with the space. Well, I think yeah. one of the things that I love best about working at Epic is that I've made so many first time gardening mistakes, like it's so yeah, yeah, fresh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that I have, um, I know what to do. You know, I know well, how to, not to make mistakes now. The thing that's cool about having people on the team that actually grow is Chris is our head of customer experience. So if you've ever like talked to us about a product or a question, it's probably been Chris that probably. has answered you, mm -hmm. Chris or Wendy. So it's cool that our money's where our mouth is. We're actually gardening, we're actually growing food, pretty much everyone on the team. So why don't we talk about what you actually have going on here, Chris? Okay, great. Tomatoes on these big old bamboo trellises. Yeah, so this is my tomato and lettuce bed. So I planted the yeah. lettuce in the middle to give it a little more shade. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have the borage uh, to keep the pollinators coming, mm -hmm. uh, the geraniums, some basil in here, and then all I, these. Are these indeterminates? Do you know? These are all indeterminate. All indeterminate. So they'll they'll get up to they'll here. They'll get up to there. Do you think this will will this keep no, them? No, I will probably TP them. Yeah. yeah. Eventually. Like pull them in in yeah. time together. Yeah. Um, eventually, and then I really want to do that kind of thing that Jacques did with the string trellis. Yeah, I yeah, really yeah. want to do that. Mm -hmm. This is a great bed for tomatoes. I had great success in this last They're year. They're looking super healthy this time of year too. Okay, I see. <laughs> I see what I like here. I see the potatoes. Yeah. And I have some garbanzo bean, which yeah. I didn't realize the potatoes were going to be this prolific. <laughs> and I actually have some celery. Yeah, there's some here. celery here too. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it's yeah. This it blows my mind how well it's doing. Mm -hmm. And then you've got the the warm bag here. I do. Which is this is actually really nice. You want to yeah. pop it open and yeah, take a look? Do. Let's see. So this is our favorite uh, worm castings production system. Let's see. Oh, you got a lot of worms in here. Look at these guys, little banana. Let's there bring those up. Yeah. This is the cattle panel the arch. The original arch that you <laughs> built, the, you got the cattle panel for in the right. first place, and right? Right, and that we cut it off. Yeah. And then I'm growing snap peas and beans. Okay. So they haven't come up, but I did this last year as well. And so the snap peas and the beans, by the end of summer, this will be completely Just covered totally with covered vines over, and yeah. beans and, uh, it's kind of like a Where's Waldo when you're trying to find them, you know, <laughs> you're just <laughs> finding them. But uh, we should get, I think I have, four different beans in here, and then I have my snap peas on this side. Okay. 
I see some eggplants here. Mm -hmm. This is from last year, same thing. I cut them back, they popped up like this. Mm -hmm. And then I have some additional peppers. I've got some sriracha's, some Ooh, nice. um, bell peppers, some jalapenos. We make a lot of salsa Okay. and freeze yeah, yeah. a lot of the peppers in the summer and then I just use them all year. Yeah, that's all you need. And then so, this is just a pollinator garden. Yeah, I was gonna say, this is just sort of like all pollinators. Yeah. Very this, pretty, very, very pretty. Oh, I love guys. the, I know, they're just, so gorgeous. I've got some sunflowers in there. You've got um, my fave. I do. Earning some, some points with the dragon fruit here. I know, and the this dragon awesome. fruit's actually doing well too. Yeah, this is the yellow one, huh? Mm -hmm. Epidopalora. And then I just have a little container of kale and a little bit of lettuce. That's a curry plant right there, oh, which no um, I use yeah, all yeah, the yeah. time. Proper uh, curry, curry, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, amazing. So over here. Yeah. Let's see what you got going on I have three on more here. beds over here. Uh, this peppers chives, which I use constantly. Mm -hmm. I'm letting my uh, cilantro go to seed. Mm -hmm. So I can have coriander you seeds. You got coriander. Mm -hmm. Oregano, which I give the chickens, actually. It's really good for them. Really? Keeps them healthy. It has a lot oh. of um, anti uh, I'm going to have to start stuff. that. We just cleared out some of our herbs, so I might, I might yeah, some Yeah, it's so good there. for them. Yeah. Uh, the beets, which I'm about to pull all these and roast them. Yeah. Beet greens, I love that. I actually got that from you, the beet greens. It's tasty, They're, right? Oh, it's like weirdly yeah. good. No, yeah. it's delicious. Yeah. So we'll do a stir fry with the kale and the beet greens all the time. And then this the passion, passion fruit. fruit, which I cut <laughs> back. I feel like I cut this back two, two, two or three times a year. It's so huge. It grew yeah. halfway up the hill. Did you get a lot of fruit off it this year? Yeah, I yeah. Got a lot of fruit off like it. Like a couple dozen or like oh, 50 plus? No, or like 50 100. plus. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. I was giving it away to neighbors and you know, I mean, you can only make so much passion fruit jam. <laughs> so much passion fruit true. things. It's true. Okay, so there's like, this spot looks amazing, and then you still have more space up here, and at, at least I'm seeing you've done a little bit, right? Right, so this space, well, we're actually working on getting some type of footing up here, so yeah. what we've done is we've planted seven different fruit trees here, a couple apples, some citrus, um, peach, and a plum, mm -hmm. and then up in that far right corner, we planted corn, because corn takes so much space, and yeah, I didn't want yeah. to devote actually, a whole a bed to it. Actually, it's a good spot up there, because wind pollination, it'll, yeah. it'll get a little windier up there. Yeah. And it's got the beans up there with it, and so that's actually doing, I'm really excited to see how that goes. So okay. we have that space too, and then we're going to turn this entire space into an orchard once we get some footing up here. Yeah, you need you need some kind of like winding trellis, yeah, it terrace is path. treacherous yeah, yeah, totally. to get up there. Okay, there is one last piece to Chris's garden that you had before anyone else on the team, I think. Jacques didn't have chickens, I didn't have chickens, you had the chickens, I believe, first. I know, I'm very excited. So let's go ahead and see Chris. All right, chicks. come on, I'll introduce let's you to the girls. Let's do it. So this is the girls. We're not a handy family, so we did the easy hoop coop because that was okay. all we could do. We're just that, not handy. Is that the name of like a product or is that No, uh, this just is the just style? like well, I got this on uh, YouTube. There was a well, there were plans for it, yeah, and yeah. it was super easy to build. And so we did all of it ourselves except for the door. Mm -hmm. um, we couldn't do the door. We had to have somebody to do the door mm -hmm. and then the door to this. And so, so all this the is double, yeah. So the coop itself and then their outdoor run is here and it's protected, right. yeah. And then they have an inside coop where they're laying eggs. Okay. Uh, and then if any predators were to by chance get through this, they could go in there. Okay. Yeah, how much do you think this whole thing ran you to do the easy hoop coop? Like I'd say like four or five hundred bucks? No, not even that. It was probably this is before the price of wood shot up so uh, high. Yeah, yeah. So I I mean with the fence, probably four hundred bucks. Not bad at all. Yeah, it's a, and it's such an easy yeah, fix. And honestly yeah. it's tall enough for me. It wouldn't be tall enough for you, but I, I mean, can I stand can, up in there. I could get in there okay. Yeah. You know, I would hit my head, but it wouldn't be that and bad. And it's easy to yeah. clean. You know, which well, is, let's mm -hmm. let's meet the girls then. I noticed you're, you're doing the, the whole fermented food. Oh idea, yeah, right? they yeah. love the fermented food. So I give them fermented food about three times a week, uh -huh. and then I'll do this, and this will last them about two days, uh -huh. and then I'll give it a break, let it ferment again, and do it again. Uh, they really really like it. Yeah. And then um, I'll give the girls some worms. You can watch them. They let's just love their little grubs. Let's do it. Oh, they know already. Right. They know what's coming. Who are we looking at here? So, this little silky. Hi, honey. This is Peaches. Peaches. This is Raven. Oh, I like that name. Chief. Hey, Raven. And Fish. And then Posey must be laying an egg, but yeah. Oh, these are cute. Yeah, they're cute. And they all lay a different color egg, which is fun. I really love the Easter egg layers. I do think that Fish is my favorite just because she's so pretty. Her coloring is so pretty and she's got those cool like mutton chops. Yeah. I love Raven. Raven's a beast. She, wow. um, she's the, my one that she escaped. Oh, Last really? Week. What a cutie. Yeah, she's really sweet. They're so, all really sweet. Oh, no, she's not cute anymore. Why don't we just take a little quick peek in here, Chris, sure. and see what's going on. So you, you've you got the little, 
the chick swing. Got the chick swing. Are they on this ever, do you think? Yeah. Yeah. Not often though. Yeah. I think it really freaks them out more than anything else. Yeah, yeah. So they come into the coop and then they come into here for- Yeah, evening. so at night mo they'll mostly roost on here oh, and then they'll that. lay their yeah. eggs in there. Mm -hmm. um, and I just had this, like I said, if we ended up getting like raccoons or this is pretty well enforced, we double enforce yeah, this. Yeah, you've got, you've got cattle panel and wire and a tarp. Yeah. So I think it's pretty, I would say it's pretty Yeah, safe. I feel like it's yeah. pretty safe. Um, the only thing that we're kind of dealing with now is we are getting rats in the coop. Oh, dang. Yeah. So um, we're working on that. I just got a rat proof feeder, which I haven't set up yet. Yeah, yeah. Because I have to train them. But yeah, Amazing. So it's, pretty, it's a pretty good space. So you're you're getting eggs and 80% of your produce all from home. Yeah. 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 I get, um, we get about five eggs a day and about five days a week. So. Amazing, 25. 25 eggs a week. Two dozen a week, mm -hmm. which is pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. For a family of five, that's certainly some, enough. Uh, some uh, Bloody Mary deviled eggs from the eggs. Let's go yeah. enjoy those right, right now, out. yeah. We're out here, back in the little shady foyer in the mm -hmm. backyard, and Chris is actually an incredible cook as well. So this is, what is this? It's a homegrown bread. So the, I'm, this is sourdough. I yep. made this this morning. Um, I love making sourdough. It takes like three days, but it's totally worth it. And mm -hmm. then I made the butter this morning with uh, chives from the garden. Mm -hmm. So chive butter is outstanding. And then the eggs were all donated by the girls. Yeah, they yeah. really appreciate it. And the celery leaves are also. And these that. are Bloody Mary Deviled Bloody Mary eggs. Deviled Eggs. Yeah, all right. Let me, let me, let so, let me, well, ahead. here, cheers. Hey, thanks for coming. Thank you for checking out my garden. Thank you guys for watching. And if you ever have customer service questions, I'm here. Chris is here for you. So, stay tuned. Good luck in the garden and keep on growing. Cheers. Ooh. Mm. Yummy, huh? That olive. Mm -hmm. That olive hits hard. Mm -hmm. That's good. <laughs>